When using a logic analyzer, it's important to remember that the captured timing diagrams are abstract recreations of the original analog signals. The original signal has noise, overshoot, ground bounce, ringing, and doesn't rise or fall instantly. Logic analyzers convert the analog signals to discrete ones and zeros by comparing the input voltages against a reference called the threshold voltage. You select the logic analyzer's threshold voltage based on the input signal's voltage swing. For example, a 0 to 5 volt logic swing requires a threshold voltage setting of about 1.5 volts. Any input voltage above the threshold is considered to be a logic 1. Any input voltage below the threshold is considered to be a logic 0. Since the circuit ground is a reference for the threshold voltage, good data probably can't be captured if the ground channels are unconnected or loose so don't forget to connect at least one ground channel. As the input signals arrive, the logic analyzer compares the voltage at each sample point to the threshold level. Voltages above the threshold level are a 1, and voltages below the threshold level are a 0. The stream of zeros and 1s recreate the original signal. Choosing the best sampling rate for normal timing mode is a trade-off between accuracy and total time span. A fixed number of sample points are available for a trace capture. A faster sample rate more accurately represents the original input signals, but the total time span by the trace capture is reduced. In contrast, a slower sampling rate covers a larger span of time, but may cause anomalies to appear in the recreated waveforms. If the sample points occur close together relative to the input signal speed, the result is an accurate recreation of the original signal. The best accuracy is achieved by sampling many times faster than the input signal speed. If the sampling rate is slowed down and the sample points occur farther apart relative to the input signal, the result is a less accurate recreation. The minimum sample rate is about five times faster than the input signal. Sampling too slow may cause the capture trace to have random wide and narrow pulses. Zooming in on one of these narrow pulses, it's obvious that one sample point occurs very near the rising edge and is stored as a logic zero. However, the next sample is far away from the actual edge due to the slow sampling rate. This sample is properly stored as a logic one, but the resulting rising edge in the captured data is not an accurate recreation. A totally different waveform results if the sample points are shifted so that they fall on the raw signal at slightly different locations. The sample points are spaced evenly and where they fall on the input signal between traces cannot be controlled. In this new example, the sample points fall on the rising edge and are accurate recreations of the original signal. But the falling edge reveals a new problem. Again, the excessive distance between sample points has caused the recreated falling edge to be a bit late. Faster sampling is the only resolution for these anomalies. However, if you understand why undersampling can cause some cosmetic anomalies in the captured trace and it doesn't affect your analysis needs, then there's no problem with a slight undersampling to achieve a larger time span.